September 25th, 1987. The movie, The Princess Bride, was released. How many of you have seen this film? Oh, not as many as I had hoped. <laughs> Ironically, when I returned home after the celebration of our harvest on September 25th, 31 years to the date after the release of this film, my family was watching it. My mom had never seen it before. My dad gave up and went to bed. Three generations sat in the living room watching this cult classic. This film, produced by Rob Reiner, is described as a fairy tale adventure about a beautiful young woman and her one true love. He must find her after a long separation and save her. They must battle the evils of the mythical kingdom of Florin to be reunited with each other. It is based on the William Gough Goldman novel, The Princess Bride, which earned its own loyal audience. The description is apt. It is, first, a fairy tale. And yes, it is the love story of Buttercup and her true love, Wesley. It follows the romantic trope, boy meets girl, boy loses girl, boy gets girl back. It is a fabulous adventure, too. As a fairy tale, it is set in a pretend world with kings and servants, knaves and serfs, pirates and rebels, wealthy and poor. It is an adventure, or as an adventure, it portrays a world of good and evil, a place where Prince Humperdinck is hungry for power and wants to marry Buttercup, even though, and yes, in spite of, knowing her love is with someone else. But most of all, it is a love story. Buttercup and Wesley love each other. When Buttercup needs Wesley to do something, he responds, as you wish. He is the type of guy who will do anything for the blonde-haired beauty who has stolen his heart. And Buttercup is devoted to Wesley, so much so that she is willing to give up her happiness to ensure Wesley will keep his life. Each is willing to make sacrifices for the other, and that is the great adventure we sometimes call love. Of course, this is a fairy tale. The depth of love is expressed through an arduous journey over sea and mountain, through meadows and fire swamps, proving his love for her, proving her love to him. Wesley and Buttercup take life-threatening risks to be reunited. It is a movie that is slapstick and silly and full of memorable lines delivered by unforgettable characters. I am Inigo Montoya. You killed my father. Prepare to die. It is a story that gives one hope that true love is possible, even when the odds are against you. The relationships found in this film including the friendships forged and the twisted bond between the prince and his count are great examples of all kinds of commitments that can be made when we are in relationship with one another. This is a story filled with love. True love. <laughs> True love is first found in God's love for creation. We hear about it in today's first lesson from Genesis, when God makes a man and then sees the loneliness in the man. God loves the man so much, God creates creature after creature, trying to provide a companion to the man, only to, to determine that the man needs a creature that is more like him. God puts the man into a deep sleep and removes one of his ribs from which he creates a helper, a partner, someone to love, a companion in the form of a woman. That story 
is found in the second chapter of Genesis. And it is the second story of the creation of humankind. The first is found in chapter 1, verse 27, which says this, So God created humankind in his image. In the image of God, he created them. Male and female, he created them. Buttercup and Wesley might think theirs is true love, but this, this is true love. That God would create partners so that none of us will be alone. We pull from these two texts from Genesis when we talk about marriage and committed relationships. But I'll add that some of our dearest, closest, significant friends can also be true loves, partners, and companions on our journeys. There are examples in the film. The friendship between Fezzik the Giant and Inigo Montoya the Swordsman, two rebels who become friends, are dependent upon one another, are brokenhearted when each thinks the other is dead, and then overjoyed at being reunited. An odd couple of misfits with their own agendas, they are committed to helping Wesley and Buttercup, even at their own risk. Then there are Prince Humperdinck and Count Rubin, the two men who together plot to keep Buttercup and Wesley apart. Friendships that develop because of need or opportunity, but that become more deeply rooted in, maybe not their hearts, but in their mutual desire for power. God created us to be in community with one another, to be in relationship through all kinds of experiences in life, to journey together, to risk together, to find comfort and joy together. God created us to also be in relationship with God and to include God on our journeys. To remind us of all this, God sent us Jesus. Jesus is the ultimate example of true love. He came to this world to teach us how to love one another as he loved us, with compassion for the sick the friendless, the needy. He showed us true love in the depth of his relationships with his disciples, loving them even when they frustrated him. He demonstrated true love in the commitments he made with his friends, Lazarus, Mary, and Martha. He taught us, by example, how to be a part of one another's journey. Buttercup and Wesley rode off into the sunrise, basking in their true love. But Jesus went a step further and gave himself for us, offering himself, offering himself on that cross. He died, resurrected, and ascended for us. I'll take that kind of true love any day. Let us pray. O giver of true love, we thank you for companions to journey with us along the way. Guide our hearts and minds as we wander together over sea and up mountains, through meadows and fire swamps, learning and growing in love for one another and in deeper, truer love for you. For, O Lord, we praise and exalt you.